we go back to this time last year, yeah. um, all of our businesses across North America um, go dark, right? As we started to be allowed to open back up, you know, somebody in your position has to plan out the labor, whatever that's going to look like. Take a guess at what the sales could be like. What were your earliest sort of memories of when stores started to reopen and, and sort of the tentative plans that you started to give them in terms of hours and sales expectation? The through thread in all of this is going to be being very nimble, right? Um, and really listening to what is needed and everybody having an understanding of we can't overspend, overspend payroll. We need to get through this, but we also need to use payroll. We need to schedule people. We need to make sure that we're scheduling the right people at the right times in order to maximize whatever opportunities they may be. Sometimes the needs were not directly related to sales, but directly related to what it was taking to keep the stores clean, um, keep the stores safe, following whatever protocols there were um, as we started coming out of things where, you know, you had capacity restrictions, uh, setting people at the front to just control capacity. You were one of the first, if not the first clients to come to me and say, we're not going to be able to rely on any of this data to plan. Yeah. We have stores opening and closing again and opening tentatively and some markets taking off and some markets being very cautious. I'm sure you were the first client that came to me and said, we have to rethink how we're going to plan because none of this data is going to be any good. Two weeks, you can get around it. Okay, how do we look at a comparable week? You start, you start getting to the three or four weeks and this is not going to change. You have to start looking at how can I substitute an entire month? How can I substitute an entire quarter? What's it going to look like when you come back? And Storeforge does a really good job with the trailing weeks and, you know, when you have blends and you're looking at last year, TYLY blend, to utilize that information and to help plan at least staffing and wanted to work with Storeforge to say, hey, how can the system automatically either bypass, disregard, you know, 2020 number and just go back to a 2019 number or have some sort of blend with it without picking individual week. And you started saying, okay, this is going to be a much longer thing, a uh, much longer situation that we're going to have to go through. Looking at it as a full year escape, because even after you opened, there was a surge. So your, your peaks and valleys for 2020 are way offset compared to previous years. So when you're looking at the plan, you had to go back to 2019 because it was the most normal current year for business for us. Well, we took a look back at 2019 as the last sort of normal year we remember. I don't know that anybody's so sure that 2021 is going to be a normal year. The customer that's going out is shopping, and that's important. Um, how do we make sure that we have people working to service the ones that are looking to shop? when they're looking to shop. Other parts are mall hours. I think, um, you know, speaking to uh, Storeforce and Storeforce's benefits, you know, it's the, the adjustment and the ability to adjust mall hours on the fly, go back and adjust coverages based on those mall hours, adjust targets as needed based on those updated hours, and then really give the managers the ability to shift the schedule, making sure that you're staffed in time to, to, to capitalize on that. And how do you make sense of a world where, where numbers like conversion are up 20 points and, and like it, traffic is down by 50% and just speaking in general terms, those KPIs don't resemble what they used to, but those are the KPIs no. we tend to hold our stores accountable for. Yeah, I mean, especially coming out of um, some of the closures, you're in a way throttling the amount of customers are walking through your door because of capacity. Most of the, for the most part, if they're walking into the store, they're spending the time to do that. They're going out into the marketplace. They're more likely going to shop. 
and then really not looking at it as a comparable for LY to LY or any number when you're looking at speaking to conversion or traffic because in essence they're irrelevant. You have to look at how stores are doing it against themselves over the previous week, previous two weeks, other stores within the marketplace. So I think that's that's really crystal clear and very important that when you're looking at those those store KPIs that that we we hold our stores and our district managers accountable for, um, 2021 isn't like any other year. Our customer is more focused than they ever were. And, and, and so really comparing against your recent trend, like what have you done recently and what does that tell us about your potential? Has there been anything that you've taken from, you know, KPIs like sales per hour and, and, and how you manage sort of tightly to the bottom line while still keeping your eye on, on that, that prize, which is the, the, you know, the top line sales? Uh, yeah, I think all, all KPIs on their own are not going to tell the whole story. So you really have to look at the different array of KPIs and the stores in which those KPIs belong to. We're not scared of making adjustments where it's needed. That's that's something that Stoke Force literally helps give us the ability to do that and then pass that message back down to the team rather quickly while also giving our field leadership the ability to view it um, and help the stores and how, how they're able to um, trend up or trend down. I mean, it's not always a trend up, you know, so there's, there's, there's some adjustments where you have to go the other direction. Um, that, you bring up a really interesting point when, as you go through these uncertain times and you're looking for a business to, uh, to become a little more predictable, you do have to be nimble with your analysis. You do need to be able to pull numbers in creative ways to draw conclusions. And you, you sometimes have to do that today and tomorrow and the next day until you feel like you got it right. We definitely have to be able looking at the business and, and, and doing what we can with what we have. It, it's, it's trying to hit a moving target all the time. And that's really where you want to give your teams the energy and the ability to do what's needed. And so, how do you manage when the targets are constantly moving? Well, then you have to be nimble. You have to be able to make those adjustments. What's your prediction for 2021? What, what is the thing you're most looking forward to? I do feel that there is a real strong positive trend in the marketplace now, but I think it's an openness and willingness to just be back and engage while not forgetting what happened in 2020 and not forgetting what's currently going on, but a sense of at least I don't have to be so constrained. I could open up and with enough people becoming more comfortable shopping, going out in the world for a retailer, that's hugely important for us. We do have a strong e-com business, but our bread and butter is in-store retail and the customer experience and our customer service is what we pride ourselves on. So with, without, customer shopping in our stores, we can't speak to that service. So um, there's a positive, there's a, there's a benefit there that I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, and I think we're going to continue to improve.